Hi everyone, I'm Chet Udell, inventor of the Airglow, and you're watching this video because you probably clicked the little tutorial button at the top of your drums percussion page. So, I'm going to give you a bit of a walkthrough for this. Um, the instrument should be enabled if you'd like to use it. Right now the hotkey isn't mapped to it, but this would be the number five on your keypad to, oh, it is there. I'm actually, you're gonna watch me do a live fix. Denoting the number five as the hotkey. There, that'll be in the patch. Make sure sound is enabled. If you've enabled it in here already, you do not need to enable it again in here. So make sure that is selected. And I like for you to make sure your Optron is, your air glow is plugged in and we see data percolating away over here. All right, so your fingerboard is going to be mapped into zones where if you press a particular location on the fingerboard, it's going to trigger a particular sound. So starting with the fret, this fingerboard right here, we got our kick, we got our snare, we got our electric tone, we got a regular low tone, high tone, and some kind of like electronic stutter. We got our hi-hat as well, hi-hat zone up here. And then if you press even further up, you get an open hi-hat. All right, now I like to, when I'm you know, using just this, I like to have this hand for some things for my bottom percussion, leaving my thumb or finger I like to tap with my finger actually up here. All right, so what if you want to lay down a really cool recording? You can just click the record button and listen to the metronome and you're gonna to want to set your subdivisions. It should be on 16 by now. Uh, what does quantize subdivision mean? Well, for a rhythmic pattern, that is the, sun, the thing that you can identify as repeating over and over again, that length of the pattern, we can split that up into equal size baskets, let's call them. So let's say for a given length on the floor, you can put two large baskets, four smaller baskets, eight even smaller baskets, or 16 teeny tiny little baskets, uh, all lined up in that little stretch on the floor. And now you can drop an apple in, and to hit a target basket, you can be a lot less precise, um, but it's gonna give you a super basic uh, facility as far as like how, um, what's the word, how uh, complex a percussion pattern might be. So this is only gonna give you two baskets to say is, are we going to, if the apple's in a basket, when we get there, we're gonna play a note. If there's no apple in the basket, we're not going to play a note. So by dividing that length into 16 baskets, now we can play a lot more intricate patterns within that loop. However, you also have to be a lot more precise per, uh, performatively in order to get the apple in that target basket. So it's a trade-off between skill and complexity. Uh, isn't that always life? Anyhow, um, I'm going to put this at 8 and I'm going to try to play a pattern that is should be quantized to 16 so you can hear that it's not exactly catching the right idea but then when I swap it to the 16 then you'll be able to hear all the extra ideas in, in that pattern. So I'm going to hit record, I'm going to hit play back here, I'm just going to, oh I need a metronome. Can I, Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm also going to clear these out. Here, let's try that one more time. Not with the playback.
Alright. Hear how it's not quite playing what I thought I was playing. So I'm going to up the quantization and you'll see it's captured. Alright. And let's see if 16 will capture my my ideas better. Alright, and let's see if it plays that back. Alright, play some hi hats. And you can stop the playback. I start it again. You can stop recording so you can play other stuff over top of it. And you can clear. All right. Here's another little thing you can do here. Uh, this is gesture, gesture driven percussion. And so here um, we will have our gyroscope X, which is on this axis here. So if you kind of give this a bit of a karate chop motion, take the neck strap off if you've got a neck strap because it's a little easier to do it that way. Don't swing it at your computer or at people um, or fragile things. So uh, when you swing it this way, notice how GX wiggles. Gyro Z is uh, this way. You can see how that wiggles. And gyro Y is this away. You can see how that wiggles. All right. Now, when you wiggle these, notice how it will, in one direction, trigger uh, this little LED, and in the other direction, it'll trigger that LED. And then to enable playback for a sound on that, we can just click this little toggle. And if I want to enable playback on this direction, and we can specify um, the volume and the panning. So this is the left speaker center and the right speaker. So you can position a few different things here. So if I wanted to just play that, oh, the playback is cleared. But anyways, I could play a little something else over top of it. So if you just wanted to have a nice little percussion section of people waving their things around, trigger percussion beats, uh, this one is a really fun way to specify which gesture is going to trigger which thing. Now, if I want to change the sound of this, I could do that. I could, um, I'm going to save this before I mess around with the audio. But you could click on this music note and highlight you, this little Duration right here, you know, anything three seconds and below is probably going to be some kind of percussion sample. So if I wanted to change this one into that nice little and enable both. Right, um, and you can basically load up whatever sound you want in that way. Like it could be a vocal sample. Uh, I wonder if we have any like um, any beatbox kind of thing or a bird. Yeah, that could be kind of fun. Anyways, that's sort of the gist of it. Uh, the VST effects, again, this is sensitive to VST effects. We've already gone through this in a different video. 
uh, namely the monophonic instrument has the best tutorial on that. I can also clip it and just maybe put like a little tutorial button in here for anybody who is curious about using VST effects. But just review the mono instrument video at the end when it talks about doing VST effects. It's uh, pretty much the same thing. All right, thank you.